Hey Moondog here, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got an Athlon Argos 20 to 60 power by 85 millimeter HD spotting scope sent to me by Athlon to test and evaluate today. In 2020, Outdoor Life magazine listed the Argos as one of their top eight new spotting scopes. And while it wasn't as sharp or bright as the new loophole they tested, they were still impressed by how well it performed for a scope that cost less than a quarter of the price. And they listed it as their best deal. Now, Athlon is known for offering you pretty good deals in terms of performance to price. In fact, I bought and tested their Talos, which is their budget tier scope, and I found it to perform as well, if not better, than other scopes that cost twice as much. Well, today we're gonna see if the Argos gives you the same kind of value in their mid-tier spotting scopes. So, let's get started. So rather than doing a typical real-time unboxing where I stumble through the contents of the box, I'm just going to show you the contents of the box. So here you go. It's nice that they included a padded case and lens caps. Next, let's take a look at the features. Okay, so here we have our spotting scope and we're going to take a closer look. I have it in its case that it came with. It's designed so that you can, if you choose to, uh, you can glass spot it with it inside of the case here. You can just unzip the front and pop off your lens cap or keep the lens cap off if you keep the inside of this clean uh, and just unzip to get access to your spotting scope without having to take it out of its protective case. And of course it does have a strap. But let's take it out of the case because we really want to take a good look at this thing. All right, oh, let's see this baby. Now, this is quite nice. Uh, the body is appears very well made. The seams are all even and there's no odd gaps or changes of color. The body itself, uh, the tube is uh, has a rubberized plastic coating, not a hard plastic, uh, and it's got a little bit of texture, so that should help if in inclement weather, if you're in, or if you have gloves in terms of grasping this. Uh, the the rear part is even more uh, textured than the rest of it. The front has um, a little bit more texture around the sunshade, and let's just try to get that off. Oh, it's not wanting to move. Hold on, let me take the front lens cap off. And that, yep, nice. A very nice air seal and water seal. Uh, that's the reason why the uh, sunshade wouldn't come off. And uh, the uh, the lens cap has a is rubber, as a flexible rubber, and has a little uh, loop there so you can attach a lanyard. Though I didn't see a lanyard in the box. Uh, if I've missed it and you have a lanyard in your box, please, please let me know. But it would have been nice if they would have included a lanyard so you can uh, fix. Uh, your lens cap because these things are lens caps are just easy to lose unless you have them attached. But as you can see, the sunshade pops off quite easily once you have uh, the lens cap off. This is a nice big 85 millimeter piece of glass. Of course, the trade off is, and with any with a larger piece of glass, you're going to get a lot more light collection. But of course, the trade off is it is heavier. But you know, that's what you're going to have to decide. Uh, it has a, an adapter, an Arca Swiss tripod adapter um, collar here, and this is to allow you to rotate. If you just unscrew this, you can rotate this into position to allow uh, the eyepiece to face your face your eye much more easily, so you don't have to crane your neck uh, and get into position. And you can rotate all the way 360 should you need to. And it, there is a little bit of indexing. I can feel it uh, at the standard sort of uh, 90 or zero degree position. You can, you can feel, you can, I don't know if you can hear that. And this is your magnification ring, which is unusual that it is a, on the entire tube itself. So that is our eyepiece there, a nice big eyepiece, and it does have an integrated eye cup. All right, so this is our power wheel, turns from 20 to 60, and it is butter smooth and super easy to turn. Um, the eyepiece is nice and big. Uh, the uh, specs on this say that you have almost a two inch eye box at 20 power and a one inch eye box at 60. So we'll take a look at that. And uh, eye relief is right under um, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 inches. While the eyepiece and the externals appear impressive, the most important aspect of any optic is what the image looks like through it. So let's take a look at that next. 
We are looking at the peak of Mount Davidson approximately 1300 yards away, and we are looking through the Argos at its lowest power setting of 20, so we get the best overall image quality in terms of color, saturation, brightness, and detail. Because as we bring up the magnification, uh, we are just bringing up all the faults of the glass. So let's do that now. And as we zoom in, um, that vignetting um, is a artifact of the camera position, but it also indicates a change in our um, eye relief. So let me just adjust that slightly here. And I have to say the eye relief does get quite shallow. I have to bring my... Um, glasses right up to the eyepiece there but that is there we go we are at maximum power which is 60 power and uh, in the center of our field of view there we have a uh, trail marker sign at the top of the hill we are getting a little bit of heat shimmer uh, this morning here it is a w typical warm winter day here in uh, northern california in san francisco uh, that object there is a um, about a six foot tall pole with a 30 36 inch steel sign at the top of it which is a good proxy for a steel target at this distance um, but we can also see some good detail on uh, the objects below that trail marker sign which oftentimes um, can't really be seen with lower power scopes that is a, a concrete um, uh, utility box underneath the uh, the trail marker sign which has some graffiti on it and I can't really quite read whatever somebody wrote on there but it, that is graffiti and there is a uh, a, um, a steel or metal J pipe uh, venting pipe for I guess whatever electrical equipment is in that um, that utility box there but this is um, a good indication of what you could see uh, at extreme distance with this scope and how clear it is. All right, we are looking at a raven 50 yards away on a uh, tree branch there. And we have the scope at 20 power. And I'm just going to bring this up to its maximum. We're going to have to adjust our point of aim there. But you can see as we bring up our magnification, we do introduce a uh, some chromatic aberration visible there at the edges of the image. And let's center our raven here and see if we can adjust the focus a bit. On Mr. Raven, I'm trying to get that light bleed into the camera out of frame. Okay, we're at the rifle range, and while I walk down to set up some reference targets that we can take a look at through the scope, I'd like to ask you to take a moment and press the like, subscribe, and notification bell buttons. It's totally free, and it's an easy way for you to show your support for the work that I put in to create these review videos. So, thank you! Okay, we're looking at four reference targets downrange at 100 yards through the scope at its lowest power of 20. The overall image is sharp and well detailed, though there is a little bit of softening around the outer edges. As we zoom in to its highest power of 60, the image does get a bit darker, which is pretty typical. And a little bit of refocusing was required, but the scope kept its point of aim. We can see a little bit of fuzziness caused by chromatic aberration at the very edge of the white target frame, especially towards the right of the image, a little bit of green rather than the typical purple fringe. Now in terms of practical sharpness and detail, if we look at the reference target in the center, we can easily make out the bullet holes on the reactive sticker target, but more importantly I can make out tiny 22 caliber holes below the sticker target and one at the very bottom edge of the paper. For an objective measure, let's take a look at the U.S. Air Force's optical resolution chart on the right. I can make out both horizontal and vertical lines down to element 6 in group 0, which is remarkable. The level of detail is a little more evident in this still photo that I took through the scope and digitally enlarged. I swear, with my naked eye, I can make details down to element 2 in group 1, which I've never seen with any scope that costs less than $1,000. So that's the Athlon Argos, 
a solid, well-built HD spotting scope that offers the features and performance you'd expect in a mid-tier sporting optic, perhaps more. Certainly not as sharp as a $1,000 Leupold or Vortex, but then again, this retails for less than $400, so you're certainly getting more than you pay for. How does this compare against Athlon's own lower-end Talos? Well, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I've already reviewed the Talos, and I'll post up a link to that video on screen right now, and if you don't see a link, look for it in the video description. And of course, you can always find that video on my website, moondogindustries.com. There you'll find written reviews of the Argos and the Talos with product links so you can purchase either of them online. Please use those affiliate links because it helps support this channel. And another free way to support this channel is to simply hit the like, subscribe, and bell buttons because you're telling the algorithm that this is good content and it's more likely to suggest this video to other folks like you. Thanks again for watching. Moondog, out. Hey. If you enjoyed this video, please share it on forums, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, MeWe, whatever social media you're on. And if you want to see all of my videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.